In any job order costing system, you start with the purchase and issue of the raw materials. And there are three accounts involved. First, we have the raw materials, where we record the, the purchases of the raw materials. Next, we have the manufacturing overhead, where we issue the indirect materials. Then we have the working process or job cost sheet where we issue the direct materials for the job. Recording direct materials cost to a job. It is recorded on the job cost sheet or the working process account that the materials are issued to. And in this case here, we have a uh, space on the job course sheet that is reserved for direct materials. A job course sheet looks like the one you are looking at on your screen there now. There are records for direct materials, direct labor, and for manufacturing overhead. There is also a course summary where we have the three items again, the three elements of cost, and the, uh, there's also a summary for the total cost and the unit product cost, if it's more than one unit being produced. Labor cost flow summary. Labor cost must first be collected on a source document called an employee time card or ticket. Labor may be direct or indirect. Direct labor can be traced to the job and recorded on the relevant job course sheet. Indirect labor is recorded in the manufacturing overhead account. From there, it will be apportioned to the jobs on the basis of the activity level. All the employees' time cards for a particular job, that's direct labor, are collected and recorded on the relevant job course sheet under direct labor. We'll see that here in this space here. Overhead cost flow summary. So we have the manufacturing overhead account and all the actual overhead charges are debited into the manufacturing overhead account. The employee time ticket with the indirect labor is also up debited to the manufacturing overhead account. All the indirect materials from the raw materials account is also transferred to the manufacturing overhead account. So the manufacturing overhead account is like a big pool into which all the overheads is accumulated. From the manufacturing overhead account, we use a predetermined overhead rate to apply the overhead to the relevant job cost sheet. Let's look at the manufacturing overhead application. The POHR that is used to apply manufacturing overhead to job costs is calculated by taking the estimated total manufacturing overhead cost for the coming period Notice it is the estimated total and divided it by the estimated total units in the allocation base for the common period. The allocation base is usually some activity like labor or machine hours or direct labor costs in our case for keep. Estimated total is the same as the budgeted total that you have at your annual budget. A 
right? Ideally, the allocation base is a cost driver that causes the overhead. The predetermined overhead rate used to apply overhead to the job is determined before the period begins. That is, it is a budgeted overhead rate. The overhead cost, after we calculate the and apply the POHR, the amount is entered in the section of the job cost sheet for manufacturing overhead. If it's been done by direct labor, if then we'll take the direct labor from here and apportion it the manufacturing overhead rate to the manufacturing overheads. Next it is included in the summary here and when we add these three together we can get our total cost of the job.